Good morning, Jeffrey Friedman, Senior Commodity Broker with RJO Futures with morning comments on stock index futures. Today, August 24th, and we'll give you the word of the day. The word of the day, besides being Friday, and everything that Friday really means, is concern. Concern, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, first thing, economic reports in the United States, durable goods, disappointing. Uh, if you take out, if you take out, uh, <coughs> excuse me, transportation, uh, then it was really a negative number for goods and services. So, uh, have said that, uh, the market kind of pulled back a little bit. But you got to remember, yesterday was a big down day, our biggest down day in a month. And it looks like if we stay right here in the stock index futures, we'll have our first down week in two months. So we've been kind of on a tear going up. Uh, the thought was that they're going to resolve Europe and that we're going to get QE3 in America. And, but that's kind of subsiding, kind of buy the rumor, sell the fact attitude when we got the announcement this week early on Tuesday, Wednesday from the FOMC minutes. Now, have said that, nice article for you guys that like to read in the New York Times on China confronts mounting piles of unsold goods. What does this represent? On an economic front, it represents that they've stockpiled and they're not exporting out and that they're slowing down and that they might need the stimulus. And remember, I've always said when China sneezes, the world could catch a cold. So we got to be very careful about that. If this represents the first week in two months of a down week in the stock index futures, and I primarily like to always gauge the S&P, it's the broad stock index. Um, it has the most participation because it is the broad index and it has so many different uh, sectors of different parts of our economy. So that's why you should probably gauge that as your pivot index for other stock index futures. Now, um, have looked at that. Uh, let's take a look at the technical point of view uh, in the market. We did mention about our first down week. Um, we did hold around the 13 in the September contract, S&P future contract. We did hold yesterday around the 1397 area. That's going to be kind of important. We are down a little bit today. Volume all this week has been very weak. Uh, it's not surprising for summertime. That's why I said it's Friday in the summer, so I don't expect volume to explode. Um, looking on the way up, if the bulls want to try to take control of the marketplace again. Um, and, and by the way, yesterday's down day was one of the worst days for the month. Uh, that put us from an uptrend on classical chart analysis to sideways to up. So it did do some damage, but not a super lot. The big damage would be if the S&P September contract could close under 1377. Uh, we do have some minor support, 1397. Uh, on the way up for the bulls to try to get some kind of momentum back in their favor would be 1409, 1424 is where we failed this last time up, if we could close above 24, then your target would be 1443 if you're in the bull camp. If you're in the bear camp, you obviously would like to, to close under 97 and surely have some of the bears come out of the uh, hibernation and press towards the 1377. And that, a close under 1377, in my opinion, would change the classical uh, chart analysis from sideways to up to sideways to down, and that would be a trend reversal kind of area, uh, draw a line in the sand. Remember always, you can call me anytime you want. The number is on the bottom of your screen, Jeffrey Friedman, or you know, send me an email, uh, and we can talk about any markets you want. I do this kind of analysis for all the markets. Remember always, trading futures or option to futures involves risk of loss and is not suitable for everyone. Good luck, good trading, and give me a call.